okay just we are expecting the quality okay so what it means so whether it is from the software product or the hardware product okay so we would like to expect the quality okay where some futures like any futures or any new implementations they are adding okay so in all the phases we would like to expect the quality without bugs okay without bugs or without failures without faults um, how the system will work okay so that we are going to do with the help of the testing okay so this is the testing uh, definition so the definition is testing is the process of executing the program the aim of finding errors and file files and uh, measure the quality and uh, when you cover the files and the quality and finding the errors in the software no so you will get a confidence to use that software okay so that will provide the confidence to make sure that software should be error free that is what the testing okay so and development is where we are going to implement or uh, the new features where we are design the new features it will be the part of the development activity okay what is debugging so debugging is the process of finding or fixing the errors okay so just you uh, within the software you will identify the problems and make them uh, solve within the time so that will be the part of the debugging okay so if it is related to the software or related to the hardware so that will be all phase of the debugging okay so how it will cover generally so in the real time process no where we have the canoe as you know the canoe is a one tool with the help of the canoe tool uh, the tools are installed in the pc okay so something like uh, this is a ecu okay and this is the protocol communication protocol we have where it will do the tx and rx message okay from the canoe tool we are able to see uh, read the data and identify the data what is exactly happening and debugging is the from the development phase of uh, tool uh, generally we consider the lotter bag lotter bag is a one tool okay and uh, this is connected to the ecu and uh, in the pc that is the lotter bag is a hardware tool and in the pc we have the uh, trace 32 and some other uh, other tools okay so that is for the debugging so what it access so it will access the software variables and uh, the system variables and internal functionality of the software so all that can be accessed and where we are able to modify and uh, debug so that are the operations will be performed towards the software and towards the hardware uh, we are going to verify with respect to the sensors and the switches uh, and some of the pmw uh, modules so that and algorithms so that all will be considered as a part of the hardware related things uh, that will be identified and fixed from the hardware related point of view so this is a part of a debugging debugging is identifying the problem and uh, finding the solutions towards the software and uh, making sure that uh, the uh, it it it, oh, it no. should be error free that will be the pass, uh, part of the debug so it is a de part of a debugging okay debugging is where we identify the source code with the help of the uh, related to the software or hardware related so we'll find and fix the errors that will be the part of a debugging okay next uh, so when software doesn't work as per expected no we usually debug something related to the software it is a part of the activity of where we are going to debug and verify the each and every line in the software okay so main intention is we need to identify the problems and the errors in the software whether it is related to the hardware or it is related to the software we'll identify and we'll fix the problem in the that is a part of a debugging 
Okay, so there are, uh, this is a very important towards uh, the embedded system. In the embedded systems, we have uh, the four phases. That is the mod mill, means model in loop. So modern in loop is specifically uh, related to the plant model. Uh, so that will design with the help of MATLAB symlink. What this MATLAB symlink will do now? So in, instead of the physical uh, component, we are going to simulate simulate the uh, physical component to the instead of physical component we are going to simulate with the uh, virtual component that is a part of simulation simulation we don't have a, it is a real real component it is not a real component not a real component but it acts like a it it acts like a real component it acts like a real component so that is the simulation part okay so with the help of the simulation uh, where we are creating the virtual platform and uh, we'll make that uh, instead of physical sensor and physical switches we have the virtual platform that will act as the real uh, component okay so it means whatever the software you have now that software instead of giving the inputs and outputs to the physical component you are creating the virtual platform with the help of the matlab simulink and uh, just you are changing the inputs and outputs of the operations so that is how the model in loop okay and uh, the sil sil is specifically the software in loop uh, so software in loop how it will act so where here uh, the software only consider okay so the software is specifically for the modules which we made uh, so instead of uh, giving this uh, this is a software into the controller so just uh, we are checking with the help of the software it is a kind of a unit testing where we are checking the functionalities of the software within the software level and next is the pill that is the processor in loop so processor in loop is specifically uh, the ECU uh, it will be connected and uh, we have the PC from the PC uh, just we are sending the software means we are flashing the software into the ECU and uh, we are debug we are able to debug it and we are able to test it so that will be the part of the processor in loop okay so in the processor in loop whatever the inputs so whatever the inputs you are giving uh, and uh, just you are expecting the output okay the same it will be the same input if you give the related operation output will be verified okay so it you won't have any feedback mechanism so we have the control system in control system we have two scenarios control system we have two scenarios first is closed loop system and uh, the open loop system open loop system okay so open loop system means specifically uh, it where we are giving the input to the controller means this is a control system and expecting the output it won't have any feedback Con closed loop system is we have the input and this is the controller that ACU the processor if you say and output and uh, so you have the feedback the feedback will be there here so with the help of the feedback you can verify the data okay so there are some applications with respect to the closed loop system and open loop system okay so whatever uh, single phase microcontroller when you are you you are using no so it will be a part of a mic, uh, open loop system like this are a kind of a system testing okay so uh, even the closed loop system and open loops comes under the system level testing 
but the scenario will be differ uh, coming to the open loop you will expect the in output from the input but here it is not like that in the closed loop we have the feedback mechanism with the feedback mechanism will understand the changes uh, something it is not clear okay so it it will be we call as the hill hardware in loop means whatever the because of the feedback mechanism this is comes under the hill model hardware in loop what we, it means so hardware in loop it is a looping of the control system into the um, specific uh, issues it have the feedback mechanism okay so that will be the part of the hill okay so this model based development and verification approaches are highly desired in the development of safety critical embedded system because this help to identify the functional and non functional issues in early development stages okay so this mill is the one means model whatever the model in loop software in loop process in loop and hill testing no these are very important phases where we are get we are identifying the functional and non functional issues in the development phases and we are going to test in the test environment okay so how we are following is just we are following a process of the v model v model is the verification the left side and the validation going forward we'll learn in more about this verification and val validation so verification and validation is the backbone of any mo model based development process okay so and it is used to check them multiples algorithms most of the algorithms will be designed within this uh, model development activity within the v model development uh, process this is a process okay so here the model 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 in loop is it will verify the accuracy and the acceptance okay because as i told you it is a specific to the plant model simulink uh we have instead of the physical component we have the virtual comp activity component that will be the developed that we called as the plant model plant model means uh where uh the example if you say the car okay so the car I, it have many sensors and many ecus okay so for that uh, many issues and hardware so it we cannot uh, assemble the complete features in the single ECU and we cannot do the testing for that what we are going to do so where we'll create the model uh, with the help of the model we'll feel that software uh, that a complete model it acts like a car a car environment so that we are going to test from our software that is a model in loop and software in loop is it will check we are going to check the behavior of the source code what we are developed how how the uh, memory is will be stable for when we are working with the software how the memory will be stable and how that flashing can be controlled uh, so that will be part of a software in loop and process in loop processor in loop is specifically we are generating the code and uh, with respect to the target target means the controller here so that we are going to use the compiler and uh, we'll execute the code into the controller and we'll check the functionalities how the functionalities will work so like example the sensor if you need to read the temperature sensor how it will be displayed so if to some uh, physical presence like uh, you need to open the door when some object is entering near towards the door the door should open okay so if it is a object what is the length and width of the object to allow inside that door so that will be a process of a processor in loop and uh, next will be the hardware in loop so it is used for developing and testing of the complete control system means the complete vehicle uh, so it have the all the physical components and uh, whichever the physical components are not available that we are going to create as a plant model in the simulink and that we are going to uh, 
do the testing, whichever we developed from the development end. So that will be the part of the sill, mill, pill, and uh, testing. These are the phases of the embedded testing that we have. Okay. What is uh, then as a part of a uh, doing the testing, what are the uh, why we are going to do the testing and what are the scenarios we will cover as a part of a testing? So here we have the error. So who will create the error? The person makes the error in the designing as well as in the when he is developing the code. Okay, so designing our development. He will going to do the some part of code errors in the designing uh, uh, and the development phase. And because of that, the fault will be created in the software. And because of the fault, the complete application going to filed in the operation. So that will be the failure. Okay, so because of the error, we got the fault. And because of the fault, the failure came in the operation. Because of the one reason, only the person make the error. Okay, so what is the error? Error is any incorrect human activity or the action that produces a problem in the system is called an error. Means incorrect human activity. He is not able to listen clearly when the requirement is uh, happening. And he listens the requirement, but he is not able to present it in clearly in the software. That will become as a part of an error. Okay, and uh, because of that, uh, he created the fault in the software. Okay, so that is a uh, that is what the error definition and fault defect bug. Okay, so uh, when we are doing the testing, no, we always check the action and the expected results. Okay, so like uh, suppose if I say uh check the temperature check the temperature so the expected is you need to observe it observe the temperature temperature is updating okay so action is what we are go doing going to make and what expected is what we are going to observe that will be part of expected, how that system is responded when we are giving the action as a input. And expected is the output of the system. Okay, as in a action, so just you are giving the input and expected that temperature is updating. So then there is no deviation between the action and expected. So similarly, the deviation from the expected behavior to the actual behavior of the system uh, is called a defect or bug okay so only the deviation between the act action and expected if it is observed we call as the defect or bug why this game is because the person created the, the error in the design and development phase And uh, next will be the failure. So why this failure is created means uh, in the development phase, the problem is identified and testing phase he ignored, means he not tested it. Because of that, the at end user means who are going to use that product or application, the complete system going to file it. So this is a part of the failure. The deviation identified by the, by the end user when using the system or software it is called a failure. Okay, note here, uh, bug is nothing but a, uh, it is a subset of the defect, it is same. Okay. So this is all about the defect, bug, error and failure definitions. And uh, why, what is the reasons? So the defects we are getting in the software. 
the first phase will be the incorrect requirement means when you are getting the requirement no so you should be have a clear understanding of the requirement uh, and the correct implementation of the requirement and uh, you should have a proper document so then it will be clear for the requirement and next is if you get uh, the wrong requirement you will create the wrong design okay so if the requirement is not clear what you will do you are uh, whatever the requirement it present you are going to prepare the same design so once you prepare the same design what you will do so you will prepare the uh, code also wrong whatever the implementation code also you are going to do the wrong code then once you make the wrong code uh, you will get you will create a bug okay and uh, sometimes you will have the logic when you are designing you no know? uh, so instead of uh, and okay so like if it is instead of single equal uh, you are going to add double so this is like a comparison equal if it is a single equal it is a kind of a assign so like this kind of logic you are going to miss when you are implementing in the code due to that you are able to face uh, you were able to identify the defects uh, when you are doing the testing because of this logic things and complex technology and moreover sometimes you will have the information now for the specific sensor it need to be triggered to the switch and once the switch is opened and you need to uh, operate the function actuator such uh, this is like a complicated uh, system in terms of hardware so then for implementation of the software also it create a complex so that's why you can you may chance of missing the connection so that's why uh, the complex technology also can create the defect in the software and uh, moreover work pressure for this complex activity when you are working no so you may chance that you can miss the logics so that's why is from the development and design phase if the because of the work pressure and the activity uh, there are the chances of getting the defects in the software and moreover frequent changes in the requirement so example if you say the design phase they come up with a, a plus b a plus b equals to c and instantly they change the a into b now okay and uh, this a plus b got need to add in thousands thousand dot c files okay and they changed completely the requirement in stuff and they need to give the multiplication in thousands files they need to change it okay but when they are changing they need to check the code like structures if else while loops and some of the pointer concepts on and the uh, structure and unions all those things to be checked and they need to verify it if they're not able to do what will happen so they know if they're not able to change it so that will create a defect in the software okay so those are the reasons like uh, we usually get the defects in the software okay any doubts till now okay okay so uh, what are the software testing methods so why we are uh, going with the methods because uh, when we are doing the testing we need to cover with respect to the software towards uh, without software we need to uh, we need to check uh, the out of the software towards the uh, functionalities or the features and with respect to the code we need to uh, run with the code and we need to test the software we need to without running the code we need to test the software so there are such scenarios so here we have the methods of three methods like white box testing 
white box testing we are going to test as a part of a code test code level testing okay and next is a black box testing black box testing is a kind of uh, the testing where we are testing without code execution without code knowledge you mean to say without code knowledge we are going to do the testing and uh, next is a gray box testing it is a combination of both white box and black box testing so these are the three types of uh, software testing methods we have we'll in going in detail we'll discuss this so white box testing so white box testing who will do generally uh, it will be done by the programming knowledge guys okay pro who have the programming knowledge like c or c plus plus or java kind of programming knowledge knowledge should be required so they will do uh, the unit level testing so here why they will do unit level testing how they are doing is so they are going to do with the help of structures data types and the memory utilizations and all they will check and they will check the if else loop and while loops and other functionalities with the help of that with the code level they are going to do the white box testing so generally the it is also it will be conducted on the internal logic of the program as i told and uh, requires the programming skills for doing the testing it will be covered uh, the problems and hidden errors with the specific component so it will be a part of a white box testing and uh, uh, this type of uh, software testing is also known as the open box testing structural uh, testing logic driven testing and clear box testing okay so white box testing is a unit level testing it will be, uh, requires the programming skills to do the testing that will be the short definition and next is coming to the black box testing so black box testing just we are giving the input to the system and we are expecting the output okay so what we are going to do with the help of black box testing so we are going to check the functionality of the application whether it is working as per the customer requirement or not so that is the black box testing we are give, we, without programming knowledge we are going to test the functionality of the application uh, according to the customer requirement whether it is working or not and uh, we are going to test the behavior of the software and here programming knowledge is not required for the black box testing and next coming to the gray box testing so it is a combination of black box and white box testing so here partial knowledge is required for for doing the gray box testing and here we are going to check with the internal functionalities of the software okay like if you say example uh like at the gmail okay so when you are entering into the gmail login and you given the credential of gmail and password you it is redirecting to the home page means uh whatever the redirecting it happened to the home page no it should uh happen because of the testing of the modules separately okay so if it is not happening with respect to home page to the login then the code level knowledge person he is going to do the testing where it got breaked 
when it is uh, after giving the credentials why it is not able to enter into the home page so that will be a part of a gray box testing and uh, next coming to the functional testing as i told you in the black box testing we are going to do the testing of uh, the functional uh, behavior of the application okay so as a part of the black box testing we have two scenarios uh, the functional level testing and non functional level testing and functional level testing is where we are going to test the system under application under test means so whatever the software we have that we are flashing into the controller and we are going to test how the software is act in the system that will be the part of the application under test or system under test or software under test definitions and functionality is nothing but the behavior of the application and uh, here we are going to test the futures how the functionality should work in the real time so that will be the part of a functional level testing and uh, so here we'll follow the same process so where we have uh, the scenario of the actual um so actual the like we will going to write with the test cases of the actual presence and uh, the expected so in the action you are giving the input and uh, in the expected expected you are expecting some output for the related input so it is a kind of the same black box and here you are going to test with the functional behavior of the software okay so uh, and uh, next is non functional so non functional is we are going to test the security part like uh, someone who are who need to check the security function is not uh, working or not like if you say example phone pay okay so the phone pay functionalities are uh, you, it should transfer the amount okay that will be the functionality and non functionalities how securely the amount is transferred to the other person that will be a part of a security and uh, next will be the availability means uh, so if the software or the applications that need to be uh, stable it's a kind of the stability that we are going to check in the availability and efficiency so means how fast it and how fast and how clear it will give the output and integrity so integrity means it's a combination of the multiple softwares or multiple hardwares that will be a part of the integrity and reliability so that will be the trust uh, the customers or the, who are going to use the applications or software will get towards the reliability reliability means how reality it will work the software and survey availability so it have how how much time how much duration or what extent i can use the application or software that will be the part of survivability and usability how it is friendly to us and flexibility uh, so flexibility is how flexibility the software uh, or the system that can be used by the person and scalability it is the uh, so if the software or application uh, how with how many devices can he able to access and how many applic uh, devices he able to control it that it will be a part of the scalability and reusability uh, so if the software is flashed into the ecu one time and i am able to change it again or update so that can be part of the reusability and the portability is like porting of the one software to the another software uh, means uh, porting means uh, this is a one issue and uh, another issue will be the two so how i can interconnect these two issues uh, and how i can change exchange the data of the software into one from one to two 
so that will be the portability so interoperability is specifically when towards between the ec users how this exchange will be happen that will be the part of interoperability so these are the non functional uh, functionalities testing we have so generally we are going to check is stable or not with the help of non functional testing and it will verify uh, whether the software works how well it works that is a part of a non functional testing and uh, moreover non functionality should increases the usability efficiency and maintainability and portability of the product so non functional testing when you are doing for the system or software so we always go with the uh, this parameters how we are able to use and how efficiency and how we can able to maintain the product or the system and how portability it is how frequent changes we can do so these are very uh, important concepts towards the functional and non functional software embedded testing and uh, so the major difference it will be like what the product does that means in the functional testing whatever we are going to do the testing as a part of functional testing how that product does how how it will check the operations and how it will execute the application how we are giving the input and how how we are going to verify the output that will be the part of the functional and uh, non functional just we are checking the behavior of the application when we are giving the input and output how this system behaves so that will be a part of the non functional and it checks the actual result is working according to the expected or not that will be the part of the functional testing and non functional testing is specific to the time and speed and software means when you are do the login that is a common phase of understanding the requirement like when you are given the login of username and password it redirect to the home page so it took 5 seconds but it should happen one second after entering you should you should get it within one second so the time and the speed so this all comes under the non functional testing okay and uh, here the functional testing is the customer will uh, give the feedback because majority of the functionalities uh, will be um, those the customers are used up the product or application daily basis okay the customer will be, uh, give the information that feedback how why this function specific function the switch or the sensors are not working so that will be updated by the customer feedback and even non functional testing so here also the customer will update so how you need to improve the functionality like sensor or switches kind of information how you can be improved towards the time or the speed of the uh, output response that you are expecting and it is the functionality of the software uh, and we are checking the performance of the software so uh, there are major difference between this functional and non functional is uh, so here we have the unit level testing integration testing system testing and acceptance testing so uh, those who are entering in, into the as a part of testing knowledge or domain in, in any it or non it field they should know this non unit testing and integration testing acceptance testing and some part of non functional testing the performance testing load testing volume testing stress testing security testing installation testing compatibility testing and migration testing what it means performance is related to the time and speed load testing is how many persons can able to access same time and volume is uh, how many persons can access the data and uh, stress testing is when you are accessing accessing the multiple users at a time what is the stress of the application that you are going to test it and security is uh, where if single user or multiple users able to access the information 
how secure it is and installation is uh, like a, uh, so you install some software in the system you need to uninstall it so whether install and uninstall is happening successfully or not that you are going to test it as a part of installation testing and compatibility testing is so the software which we are going to flash into the controller whether we are flashing the right controller software into the ecu or not so that will be a part of a compatibility testing and migration testing so the, suppose you have say that uh, the software point 1.1 is one software and uh, now it got changed to software 1 2.2 so the same software when you are flashing the issue should work and when it changes the software this also should work how this migration when you are migrating one software to another software how this is you able to understand the software whether it is working or not so that will be a part of the migration testing so uh, this is a one example of uh, functional testing so like we are going to uh, check the uh, username and password just uh, that is a main agenda username and password the uh, giving uh, in detail and verifying whether the login is working that is a functionality so after giving the login and password how it is redirect to the home page that will be the performance okay these are the functional and non-functional test cases uh, i mean uh, where we are going to test uh, the functional and non-functional with the help of the test cases. Okay, there are SIAD. What are the types of software uh, testing? So as you we know, there are manual testing and automation testing. What is manual testing? Manual testing is uh, where the physical, physically you need to present and you need to give the uh, input and you need to verify it manually. Okay, automation is, it is a complete the script. Uh, okay, so where you will use the CAPL script or CAPL or C++ or JavaScript, that Python, all this will be a part of automation. And uh, it will give the report as well. So automation will give the report. The whether it is a pass or filed but in manual it won't happen so you will get you need to observe and uh, make the test case pass or filed manually okay script it will give whatever you updated in the script okay automation script in manual with your presence and knowledge, you are going to test as per the input requirement. So these are the two types of levels of testing that we usually do. So manual testing is a kind of software testing in which software tester develops and execute the test case without using any automation testing tool. Okay, so where he usually test with the existing tools like canoe can app can excels as in a part of embedded okay some of the key tools they will use and they will do the testing automation testing so here they will execute uh with the with the because if, when you are writing the code now you need the, the automation tools so with the help of automation tools you are writing the script and you are doing the testing. So that will be the part of automation testing. So here, automatically, it will create the report, the actual results and expected result, and it